guys. It is Melanie Mitro here on Committed to Getting Fit. It is Sunday and it is my Sunday rest and relax relaxation day. But even more importantly than that, it is my Sunday plan and prep. And for the past six and a half years now, this is one thing that I find that a lot of people don't take the time to do. And so today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the most common mistakes that, that I see people make when it comes to having success with their nutrition or their fitness or even just simply making something a lifestyle change. So you can comment below, you can let me know if you agree with these tips or if you've got some more to add because I think they're really valuable. So let me ask you a question. How many of you say to yourselves, okay, today is gonna be the day, right? It's Sunday and you're like, tomorrow's the day. I'm off track, my kids, I enjoyed my summer, you know, I've been enjoying the weekends, I enjoyed the Labor Day holiday, and now here I am, Sunday, I feel blah, I had too many cocktails, I ate pizza, we went out for ice cream, and I swear, I swear that this Monday, this Monday is gonna be the day where I don't fall back into that same routine. Like, now is really gonna be the time that I finally make the change. And you were like gung-ho about it. And maybe you'll even do half of the things that I'm gonna list out today but then life gets the best of you and you get busy and your kids are involved in sports and work is really crazy and you know maybe you didn't get enough sleep or you sleep through the alarm and before you know it, it just becomes this ripple effect and all of a sudden by Wednesday and Thursday, you're right back where you started again. And you do the same thing every single Sunday. You're like, I vow that this is the last time that I start over. This is the time when I'm truly gonna make a change. And I get it, I get it that our lives are crazy. I get it that we're busy. I have two crazy boys that could at any moment come storming in here from outside while I'm making you this live video. I mean, at any point in time, my house is mass chaos. But the one thing that I find is that when, I'm a, when, I'm, when I feel good about myself, when I fuel myself with good food, right? I, I have brain power when I exercise and I make the time to exercise. When I get enough sleep, I'm a better wife. I'm a better mom. I have more patience. And so, you know, taking care of yourself is not a bad thing and you're not taking away time from your family. You truly are making your family happier and healthier and it is something that really does have a ripple effect. So, as you sit here on Sunday, maybe watching this video while you're waiting for, you know, your Sunday football games to kick off. This is the first common mistake is number one, when it comes to meal planning, we just don't do it at all. How many of you are guilty of saying, I don't need to follow the nutrition plan. I'll just count my calories and I'll track it on my, I'll track my steps on my Fitbit or I'll log things into my fitness pal or, you know, I don't really need to print out those tracking sheets and follow them. I'll just kind of keep track of it up here. I'm good at that, right? So how many of you are like, I got this. I don't need to measure out my food. I don't need to use these portion controlled containers. So we just don't do it. And we're like, this is gonna be an intense workout anyways. I'm sure I'll be fine. And what ends up happening is you get frustrated because by the end of the first week, you are like cardioing yourself to death. You're lifting your weights. You're doing your workouts. Maybe you're even drinking your Shakeology every single day but you're not seeing the results on the scale and you're frustrated and so you have a glass of wine and that glass of wine leads to you know a couple of cookies and then maybe your kids snacks and then before you know it, you're back on that cycle again. And so here's the bottom line. Number one, the biggest mistake people make is that they think that they don't need to plan. Planning is important. Even now, six and a half years into this, if I don't plan, if I don't plan, I fail because I get hangry when there's not food in the house and then I reach for something I shouldn't and my mind just isn't in the right place and I'm much more likely to give in because I didn't actually take the time to plan. So here's the thing. Go on to, I mean, how many of you have Beachbody On Demand and that's the workout that you're using or how many of you have bought a physical copy of a fitness program and you have the fitness program, but then you also have the nutrition guide. And how many people sort of slide that nutrition guide to the side and they don't pay attention? Pull that sucker out and I want you all to take the time today, sit down, read that nutrition guide. Or if you log into Beachbody On Demand, for every workout program that you choose, there is a fitness program or there's a nutrition guide. If you look at, it first pops up the workouts, then if you click workout overview, you can see all of the nutrition information. So read through, figure out your containers, figure out what bracket that you are in, and then read through the nutrition guide. And then one of my rolls of thumb that I do on Sundays is for me, is I sit down and here's my, this is like my tip. Um, I'm getting to tip number two, but I actually make, I just go on to a Word document or a spreadsheet or you can get a whiteboard out and I just have Monday through Sunday written down on here. 
I have up at the top, you can kind of see it, it's really tiny, but I have the number of calories that I, or the number of the bracket that I fall into for whatever fitness program I'm doing at this time, because everyone comes with a program. So what I do is I sit down on Sundays and I say, all right, this is how many containers I'm allowed to have. And especially at the beginning, I would sit down, I would have my booklet out, you know, and I would sit down and I'd say, okay, you know, for breakfast, all right, what's on, what's going to be my red containers? And I would literally go through here and I would look at each container and I would say to myself, okay, two eggs, you know, two eggs is what I'm going to have. And I would sit down and I would go through and I would make a meal plan. And so here, I have a very simple meal plan. Now, tip number two is this, complex recipes. How many of you sit down and you make a meal plan and you go on Pinterest or you go to the Team Beach Buddy blog and you pull all of these recipes and you print them out and then you, know, you write down all the ingredients that you need and you're like, holy cow, I'm gonna spend $300 in groceries and I'm making 10 new recipes this week. Okay, that's overwhelming in and of itself, number one. Number two, how do you account for all of those containers, that just overwhelms me. It overwhelms me. So for me, tip number two is keep it basic. Do not feel like you need to cook these wild and crazy complex recipes for dinner. If I read to you, Stacy agrees with me, if I read to you this, if you look at my meal plan, my breakfast for Monday is two eggs, a green container, I know it has carrots in here right now, but a green container of spinach that I, throw in the pan after I make my eggs with a little bit of coconut oil. Then and I put in there um, a half of a blue container of cheese, literally dump a half a container of cheese on top of my eggs. And, and I have a purple container of fruit. That is my breakfast, done. I can easily check off my boxes for my containers. My morning snack is one cup of vegetables and a spoon of almond butter. Very easy, right? That's another very easy one. Then if you look at your lunch, okay, it's so easy for lunch to just say five pieces of grilled chicken. It's Sunday, everybody's relaxing. I defrosted grilled chicken. I went outside, I grilled you know, six pieces of grilled chicken, pulled out my cutting board, chopped it all up, and then all I do is put it in. I have these little box, these containers that have really great lids that we put on top and they're they're just easy you can throw them away or they wash up you know but this is what I will do our prep in and I'll store it for the week so now when it's time to make my lunch I just grab the salad mix I grab a red container, stuff it with some chicken. I've got my cut up vegetables that I'll measure out in a green container. And you can even use these containers and just make five salads on Sunday. And then you just don't put the chicken on yet, then just put the chicken the day of, and then easy dressing, olive oil, and, and a little bit of balsamic. Super easy to do. Snack in the afternoon, one apple, a teaspoon of almond butter. Your dinner, now this is where people get off track, where, where tip number two, they don't keep it simple, it's easy. So a package of ground turkey or regular lean ground beef. Go ahead and brown it in a pan, then you get whole grain taco shells or you get lettuce shells and you cut up some vegetables, you cut up some avocados, you get a steam freezer bag of green beans or any vegetable, throw that in the microwave for three minutes and you measure it out green of green beans, red of turkey, ground turkey. You know, you have your tortilla shell, you know you've got some avocado, dinner is done. Brown rice in a bag, steamer bag. So you don't need to make these, these big complex recipes. You know, maybe the next night it, it's a piece of filet. Okay, the piece of filet, you cut it up, you put it in your red. A baked potato, okay, cut the baked potato in half, that fits in a yellow. Steamed asparagus, that's your green. So you see, I'm not making a lot of complex dinners. And then the next tip is this, take advantage of leftovers. So often we will throw on extra steak extra chicken, extra pork, whatever we're making. We'll make double the vegetables. Whatever we do, Matt and I both really try to double it up so that, again, that's where these containers come into place. We will take our containers and, and we'll save it for the next day. And then sometimes that's our lunch because, I mean, honestly, in reality, I don't eat salads every day and I get pretty sick of them pretty fast. So a lot of times we're eating our leftovers and that's our lunch the next day. 
Last week we made a spaghetti squash and we made just grilled chicken breast with some um, with some cheese on the top of it and pasta sauce and then we saved that and we made extra so that was our next day too. So just keeping it very simple. So what we do is on Sundays we plan it out. We have a separate sheet of paper. This is our grocery list so that as we're going through and making our meal plan, we're writing down what we need to grab at the grocery store so that we have things around and that we keep it very simple. All right, the next thing um, is this. Um, people don't take the time to actually, so we make a meal plan and then we're like, oh, that looks so pretty and we just tuck it away, all right? So the next part is you gotta print it out and actually take the time to do it. So we print out our meal plan. You can see mine's actually stapled and I'll talk a little bit about my tracking, but I, we usually put this up on the refrigerator and so then what we do is we have we have our grocery list and now we actually go to the grocery store on Sundays. We hit up Costco, we usually hit up the regular grocery store. We come home, we put it all away, we'll wash up our vegetables. Um, you can see I took some time to bake some potatoes. So I just stuck these in the oven at 400, baked a bunch of potatoes. We'll warm those up for the rest of the week. You know, very simple. This is our leftovers from last night. They're already in here, ready to go. We made some pitas today. But the last thing is take the time to prep, you know, take the time to write it out and go to the grocery store and come back and cut up your watermelon, cut up your, cut up your vegetables. You can even portion them out in Ziploc bags so that, you know, in the mornings when you're out the door, you just grab your stuff, throw it in a, um, a cooler and out the door. You know, so if you take the time to plan it out, you will, it will help you. You will have a, a better chance of success throughout the week. And then what we do is every day we look at the refrigerator and we say, what's for dinner? Or, you know, we, at the night before we say to ourselves, are we going to do something in the crock pot tomorrow? Cause it's a really busy day. We'll pull out the meat that we need and stick it in the refrigerator so it can defrost overnight. You know, so if you're just prepared, just that very simple act of being prepared is going to help you succeed. But I can't make you do do it. You have all of the tools you need to succeed. It's just very much a mindset shift and you making that decision that, that you do want to be successful at it. And if you can stick with it, I guarantee you 21 days, 30 days of meal planning every Sunday, printing out that meal plan, putting it on the fridge, measuring all of your containers, you will notice that it starts to become a habit. It becomes just a part of your lifestyle and what you do. And I'm going to leave you with this. So throughout the week, right, on Sundays, I may plan and prep. I've got my whole meal plan that's right here. That's And I staple it to a blank sheet of paper. And then what I do is I, and this is me, you don't have to be as crazy as I am, but I actually have markers that are in every color that the portion controlled containers are. And then I, because I don't always eat exactly what's on my meal plan. Sometimes I, I'd say I would rather have a banana than an apple. And sometimes we switch our dinners around. And so what I do is I basically say, okay, what did I eat? What was meal one? And I go down through and I don't write the food anymore, but I just write the containers that I ate. And then at the end of every day, I can look through the day and I can see, did I stay on track? Um, after dinner, what do I have left? And it also helps me throughout the day to say, you know what, I really want that sweet potato with dinner, so I'm gonna skip something at lunch. You know, I'm gonna flip things around. But every day I do this. And every night, it sort of becomes a reflection point for me. Did I drink my water? Was I really short on containers? Did I go over today? What do I want to focus on for tomorrow? You know, and this allows me to every single week make sure that I'm on track. And I really do have a little folder. And it actually says on here, it says my fitness goals. It has my program guide for whatever program I'm doing. It has my meal plan with my tracking sheets stapled to it. I also have whatever workout program I'm doing. I have my measurements and the little pictures so that I can keep track of this. And this actually sits on my desk. And so even being six years into my own health and fitness journey, I very much keep track of what I'm doing. I track my food. Am I always perfect? Absolutely not. There definitely are glasses of wine that sneak into here. There definitely have been times where I've made a mistake, but this is like my keeping it real. This helps me to make sure that I am staying on track. So as we kind of roll this all together, guys, here are the five most common mistakes that, that people do in their fitness journey is number one, they just don't 
meal plan at all. Number two, you try to overcomplicate things by making really complex recipes. Keep it simple. Number three, you feel like every single meal needs to be different. It's okay to repeat the same breakfast, the same lunches, vary the dinners, make leftovers. It doesn't have to be every single day something new. I drink my same Shakeology recipe every single day, either for breakfast or a snack. I do the same breakfast almost every single day. I am a creature of habit and that works for me. Number four, take advantage of those leftovers. Don't throw them away, make sure you save them, make them for lunch, send them with a family member or spouse. Uh, and the last one is make sure you take the time to prep and do the grocery shopping. Implementation is key. And if you ever need support or guidance and you don't have a coach to work with, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I am happy to help you. I am taking new customers all the time and I'm getting ready to kick off my back to school challenge group. It's gonna start on the 18th and this is the kind of stuff you learn when you're a part of my group. So feel free to ask and join. I would love to have you. So um, this sheet, I created this. It's very easy. Just sit down, you know, Michelle, and if you uh, just open a Word document or make a spreadsheet for yourself and just do your breakfast, your snacks, your lunch, your snack, and you can really just block it out. Um, and you can, and you know, Jen, you may not be organized like me. Maybe that isn't your strong point, but but here's the thing. Um, I, I am not always organized and you know, I don't always follow the plan to the T, but I also know that I can't make an excuse for it, I have to do it. I have to find what works for me, even if it's just planning a few days at a time. You know, even if it's getting the groceries, like you've gotta start somewhere, and if you really wanna make a change, you have to find something that works for you. And it doesn't have to be the exact same system. Maybe you can take pieces of what I've discussed today and say, I'm gonna tweak it, and then this is how I'm gonna do it, but that's really the key, is finding what works for you and finding your own system of organization that is like, this is this is works for me. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Let me just scroll through really quickly because I wasn't seeing them all as you guys jumped in. Preparation is everything. Yep. All right. Do you have the recipe for spaghetti squash you made, Kelly? Um, spaghetti squash is super easy. Just um, turn on the oven to 375, cut your spaghetti squash in half, place it face up, and then all you wanna do is cook it for, I think, 45 minutes. It depends on your oven, but once you can scrape the sides and it starts to just fall apart, that's your spaghetti squash. Then you just scoop out the guts in the middle and you just kinda take it with a fork and it just becomes like spaghetti. I put that in a bowl, I make my chicken, I get some of that Victoria's pasta sauce, which is really good, and then put that together and that's our dinner. All right, okay, I think that's it, guys. All right, well, I hope that these tips were helpful for you guys. Um, let me know if you have any other questions, and how do you not nibble on not-so-healthy foods in the evening? I stay out of the kitchen, so I, in my mind, the kitchen is closed. I, I actually turn off the lights, we turn on the dishwasher, we go into another room, and I try to make sure my last, my dinner is like 5, 30, 6 o'clock, and then for me, I have a snack an hour later, so my evening snack is like my fruit, or my Greek yogurt and berries and some almond butter in there. And then after that, I grab a cup of tea, and off I go. And it's just, it's a mindset thing for me to not nibble at night and to say my last meal is gonna be three hours before bed. So that's just one of those things. It's, it's something I have to talk myself out of. I just have to make sure I remind myself, stay out of the kitchen. The kitchen is closed. So, all right guys, I hope you have a great Sunday. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys later. Bye guys.